Thank you, Tia, and thank you to Sachs for having me here today. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the discussion of a topic with global ramification, China's transformative impact on the global clinical development landscape. I'm John Euler, the CEO and co-founder of Beijing. To some extent, I'll make forward-looking statements about Beijing in the context of today's presentation, and as our business carries certain risk. Please refer to our filings with the SEC and the Hong Kong Stock Exchange for details. The global biopharmaceutical industry is undergoing a once in a lifetime transformation. This is exciting. Seldom in our lives do we get to work in an industry that faces such change. Seismic shifts in the way innovative medicines can and should be discovered, developed and addressed and accessed are dramatically altering the key factors for success. Industry transformation is coming. It's gonna be fast and furious, and this is creating new leadership opportunities. Before I get into the details associated with this, I'd like to uh, share a few things and background about Beijing. Beijing has spent the past decade strategically building sustainable competitive advantages that internalize what I see as the key factors to future success in our industry. Beijing is a headquarterless global biotech company. I know that's a funny thing to hear, but it was important to us from the beginning to make anyone anywhere in the world just as important. Often when there's a headquarters, you know, people in other locations you know, feel secondary. That's not the case in Beijing. From day one, we've understood our mission is fighting cancer and cancer is a global problem. We have an industry that has to address it on a global basis. That's why you know, the first slide you saw in my pen say, um, cancer has no borders, neither do we. We truly believe that in the way we're approaching things. Um, Beijing is trying to make innovative, internally discovered and in-licensed medicines more affordable to patients all across the world. This is part of our mission. In the past decade, we've developed a unique combination of strategic capabilities. We've built one of the world's largest oncology research teams, and it's advancing a deep and promising pipeline. We're a fully integrated China inclusive global clinical development team that's running more than 60, I think it's approaching closer to 100 now, ongoing or planned clinical trials. We have an experienced science and medicine based commercial team and the efforts are strongly anchored in China and expanding throughout the US and Europe today. We have state of the art manufacturing, biologic and small molecule capabilities. Beijing was founded on the premise that science works, that the industry was facing shocks to the system and fighting cancer was a global borderless fight. My co-founder Dong and I anticipated that changes would enable significantly reduce drug development cost and time. Beijing now has the scale, the resources and the know-how to continue to generate innovative therapies for patients globally as well as be a partner of choice for those wanting to expand on the opportunity that we began to pursue a decade ago. Beijing's goal continues to be to leverage the dynamic environment of the industry and that's occurring in China today to transform drug development in a way that can both produce high quality innovative medicines and make them more affordable to patients around the world. Now with that background in mind, back to the transformative trends that I mentioned earlier. We really are living in the greatest time of opportunity in our industry ever. There are forces at work today that are fundamentally changing the industry in meaningful ways that we'll see and feel deeply over the next 10 years. I call them shocks to the system. And there's six that I think are essential to focus on right now. And China significantly influences several of them. The first shock, of course, is science is working better than ever. 10 years ago, when we started this company, people didn't believe that. I know it's hard to imagine that today, but it's true. It's absolutely true. People talked about the patent cliff. They didn't believe in science. They thought the easiest things were done. 
Xiaodong and I were a strong believer that we were about to see the most impactful decade ever. We all know that science works now, and companies all over the world have shown this, you know, from oncology to COVID vaccines being some of our biggest examples. I want to talk for a second about regulation. The regulators are really heroes of our industry. They understood that you know, medicine development was taking too long, and they undertook regulatory meaningful reform across the world. There are a series of changes that reduced redundant work and thereby accelerated the time frame, reduced the cost of getting medicines to patients. And that's absolutely critical in our industry. The third thing that happened was China reduced the barriers to clinical trials and enabled decreased timeline and cost associated with clinical development. When China removed some of the barriers and joined ICH, the International Council for Harmonization, it had a profound impact to accelerate medicine development globally. Our industry is an upfront cost industry by nature. It's widely documented that clinical trials account for roughly 90% of the time and 90% of the cost of developing new medicines. When you consider that the patients in China are many more times likely to enroll in clinical trials than the US and Western countries, that 25% of the world's new incidence of cancer occurs there, being able to access the China's vast patient pool can dramatically reduce overall clinical trial timelines. And this reduced costs not only in China, but everywhere when you shorten a trial. It also brings impactful medicine more quickly to patients. There is one caveat though, as China is becoming a significant participant in the industry, there's a limited pool of experienced talent that constrains the ability to run trials with global quality. Ultimately, shortening clinical trial development timelines is critical and a clear key to success in our industry. It's probably one of the most important things, but it has to be done with quality. The next point that's a fundamental shock was China began in a, reimbursing innovative medicines. This has only happened over the last four years. China is the second largest pharmaceutical market in the world, but reimbursement didn't occur until recently. And the reimbursement is at a very different price point. The lower price points in China versus the US bifurcates the industry between its two largest markets. This is profound and has worldwide ramifications, including enabling greater affordability for billions of people globally in China, but also in other countries with a lower ability to pay. Reimbursement in China historically has dramatically increased product sales. And I think we're seeing that across the board today. And therefore, for the first time, there's a strategic rationale for biopharm innovators to maintain large scale science and medicine based commercial presence in China. The next point is capitals flowing into our industry at rates that are previously unseen. The year we started our company, there was only 2.9 billion in total public flows into the industry. That shows how little people believed in it. I think last July in four days without an investment bank, Beijing raised close to $2.2 billion. You know, last year it was 53.2 billion in funding. This is spectacular for companies. It's wonderful for research. It's terrific for patients, but it creates huge competitive dynamics to which the industry needs to adapt. Speed and scale matter more now than they ever have. And lastly, I think we all know there's pricing pressure and it's increasing. Global pricing pushback is not going away, whether it's Forbes, whether it's STAT, JCO, we can read about it anywhere we look. Now, in many instances with price, of course, this is detrimental to patients. And this is the thing that gives our industry a bad image. And affordability to us is a central challenge in the places we're big already but also being able to bring our medicines to the rest of the world. So I wanna take a minute and summarize these shocks to the system that I just described. Global regulatory changes are accelerating the timeframe and reducing the cost of getting medicines approved for patient use. 
critical because this is 90% of the time and 90% of the cost. But the resources are limited to do this in a high quality fashion. It's not easy. China inclusive clinical trials enable profound speed and cost advantages, perhaps 60% time, 60% of the cost. It's very different depending on the studies, but those are things we see. And it's real, it's not a vision. But the current limited talent pool in China makes ensuring global quality a challenge. There's a bifurcation of pricing in the two largest commercial markets. And it's a challenge to meet the China NRDL pricing without jeopardizing the high US pricing points. Readily available funding is fueling tremendous competition and the affordability of medicines is increasingly challenging. I have a strong view on how these implications change the keys to success in our future industry. First, a successful future global biopharma company must be excellent at internal research. This is the heart of our industry. And that is the way that scientific research innovates by leaps and bounds. It's more than important than ever to be focused on this. Second, pursuing clinical excellence is a key priority. It's essential to be able to run these high quality China inclusive global development programs. As I said earlier, the talent pool makes it challenging and it's hard to manage quality when you rely on outside CRO organizations. Insourcing in this function, whether it's in China or globally, enables a company to maintain operational excellence. I think this is truly the key competency that a company needs as a pharmaceutical innovator. I believe it's essential for a company to own and optimize this. Again, it's 90% of the cost and 90% of the time. Third, Global market access matters. It's no longer sufficient to be a regional player. Cancer is a worldwide concern. The market is increasingly global. Going forward, having a part of the commercial assets, um, you have to have a science and medicine based China team at scale. At scale is thousands of people. It's not a few hundred. It's necessary to bring your medicine to the second largest market in the world. And for every company, we're gonna to have to look much deeper than just the wealthiest 15% of the world. Lastly, speed and scale of internal capabilities are critical to remain competitive. Agile decision-making and culture of great communication and trust is necessary and a focus on speed. I know I've covered a lot in a short time today. I also realize what I've described is easier said than done. None of this is easy, but I can offer Beijing's example of our accomplishments over the past 10 years as a testament to what's possible. Currently, our strengths include a global presence with deep knowledge and access to China's enormous patient pool, a research team that's brought to clinic 11 molecules over time. Over the past 10 years, um, we've built a development team that's 1,200 plus strong and is integrated across China, the US, Australia, and Europe. And we have commercial platforms in the world's two largest markets, China and the US, and have just begun to build out in Europe. We strengthen our internal efforts by seeking out the best partners to supplement what we strategically opt to not pursue ourselves. And our vision for successful partnering centers on Beijing, conferring the best of all world's advantages, a global presence and understanding with deep knowledge and access to China's enormous patient pool and experience and alliance relationships. Our intent is to be a partner of choice to biotech, to pharma, to scientists, and to other entrepreneurs for the benefit of cancer patients worldwide. To summarize my view of how China's evolution has a transformational impact on the global clinical development landscape, the China's evolving regulatory system is contributing to the country's growing significance and the global therapeutic development landscape. Updated regulatory policies have accelerated approvals of domestic and imported medicine. Reduced regulatory hurdles that previously impeded innovation are helping China transition from a follower to a global leader in our industry. The global pr proportion of clinical trials being conducted in China is clearly increasing. And the worldwide community stands to achieve a decreased per patient cost of medicines developed if they're inclusive of China's population. 
We have the opportunity of a lifetime before us. We have passion, commitment to quality, and a drive for innovation. The global biopharma industry has the chance now to make medicines more affordable, to reduce the cost of patient access. This is an opportunity that we cannot and must not afford to pass up. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. And I look forward to the next 10 years together as an industry fighting cancer worldwide across the globe and bringing medicine affordably to patients. Thank you. Mm -hmm.